Welcome back everyone. Super excited to show you the second version of the Quant Scientist algorithmic trading framework. The framework seeks to do a couple things. First of all, it steps you through a strategy formation framework. So from start to finish at a high level, it's all about creating a strategy, back testing that strategy and trading that strategy. But obviously there's a lot that goes into that. So at the second level, we talk about how to come up with the ideas to do that, some of the preliminary analysis, building the back test, and then the, the feedback loops that go into this process. As you'll hear me say a lot of times, algorithmic trading is all about iteration, it's all about speed, it's all about testing, uh, and you'll see how the framework uh, supports that. We talk about the details of the steps, which skills that a quant scientist actually needs to deploy or employ uh, for each of these steps and they really come down to having market intuition having some level of programming uh, experience and of course this is a python uh, course so we will talk a lot about uh, the python tools and then having some of the math and stats background and you'll see there's only a few areas where that comes in super handy and then of course uh, we get into the python quant scientist stack which is the tools uh, that we will go through in detail that will take you through the algorithmic trading framework so the first step uh, strategy formation and in this step you'll create an idea a hypothesis something to test uh, and this will come with a lot of idea generation so you can generate ideas based on your experience based on market intuition forums talking to people digital and online communities lots of different areas where you want to generate ideas uh, and then th this will form the top of the funnel that you'll then flow through uh, to do this you'll really need uh, quite a bit of market intuition or at least know where to go and look uh, the second step is the preliminary analysis and this is where you will go out and use Python to store and acquire or acquire and store market data that could be historic data that could be streaming real-time data it all really depends on your strategy from there we'll come up with some simple rules and a rule is quite simply buy sell do nothing right uh, and those rules we will test using a very very quick method that we will describe throughout the course and then from there the thing that most traders forget is apply signals so if you have the ability or excuse me filters if you have the ability to filter uh, using something like the Kalman filter as a simple example or even more sophisticated signal processing uh, techniques like the Butterworth filter, bandpass filters, etc. You can apply those to amplify your trading signal, and we will get into all that as well. From there, we get into actually backtesting. So there's quite a bit of work up front before we actually start to backtest. And in the backtest, we want to avoid brute force optimization. We'll talk a lot about that because if you brute force optimize your strategy, you're just going to overfit and you're just going to lose money. Things that you do want to look at optimizing are built into the strategy itself. So things like entry, exit like a stop loss, a market order, for example, uh, we want to check for stability of the parameters. So if you change one of your input parameters by a little bit, does your entire strategy fall apart? If yes, then you're not very robust and you're going to have problems. Uh, and then ultimately, we want to check the alpha. So IC is the information coefficient, and there's a way to detect uh, whether this is decaying, meaning that your alpha is going away. There, we will assess the risk and reward. So we will offer suggested uh, metrics, for example, drawdown, uh, sharp ratios, etc. We will offer suggestions there, uh, but ultimately, it's up to you depending on your risk tolerance. Uh, and we want to then set up the frameworks and scaffolding to start to measure that stuff. Uh, and by the way, a lot of this is a, um, a flywheel. So you can see between hypothesis and formation and your preliminary analysis, we have a cycle. So as you learn, you want to iterate and continue to improve. Similarly, with preliminary analysis and backtest, you want to continue to improve and learn as you continue down the, down the framework. Uh, finally, once we have gone through the first four steps, we have a backtest that seems to be working. We've assessed the risk and performance of that backtest. Then we want to start paper trading. And paper trading is absolutely critical. This is what helps you earn a lot of that market intuition uh, without actually risking money. And through the course, we will focus a lot on the paper trading setup. Um, Here is where you want to actually compare the results that you get in your paper trade uh, to your back test. And paper trading will be pretty close to reality. It won't be exactly reality, uh, but pretty, pretty close. Uh, and this is, of course, an iterative cycle as well, as you can see. This is where you're going to fix the technical issues. So if your connection continues to lose, if you continue to lose your connection, or you're not submitting orders, or you're not getting fills, this is the time to fix those problems. You don't want technology issues when you have money at stake. And then finally, 
testing your performance, you'll see that we are testing performance a lot. And we are comparing that back to the back test results and how we want to handle our risk. So for example, if we are okay with a high volatility strategy, then this is where we will learn, learn about those metrics. And then finally, if we've made it this far, it's time to actually trade the strategy live. So we will move away from a paper trading situation into a live trading situation. And again, we are comparing our results back to the back test. And again, we are monitoring and comparing risk and performance. Only this time we are monitoring it less so than testing it uh, because we are actually live. So then what are the three basic skills that we have to have in order to be a quant scientist. Number one is the market intuition that we've talked about. You have to have the intuition in how the market moves, have to have experience in watching the markets, seeing how orders fill or don't fill, uh, the systems that you're using, the brokers that you're using, that's super important. And then of course, programming is a big one. And this is where we will focus most of our time uh, because it is most of what you'll have to do is you'll have to implement your ideas. And then finally, the math and stats background, you can get pretty darn far with some pretty basic maths and some pretty basic statistics. I'm talking about the stuff that you learned in your undergraduate college degree. Think Statistics 101, Think Statistics 201. We are not necessarily talking about very, very complex machine learning. We are not talking about AI, artificial intelligence. We are talking about linear regressions and multivariate regressions and logistic regressions, stuff that's a couple lines of code, but you do have to understand how to interpret the results. And then finally, the tools. The tools is what everybody loves, and these are what makes up the Python quant stack. So some of the tools that we will use to help support our math and statistics is the OpenBB terminal, the Pandas library, which is all the data acquisition and manipulation, NumPy, SciPy, matplotlib, stats models. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry. Most of it is just all built into Pandas, which is what we'll do, use to do most of the heavy lifting. Uh, the event-driven backtester that we will be focusing on is the Zipline Reloaded Backtester. Uh, this is a great library, very robust, um, extremely easy to use. Syntax is great, great API once you have it set up. Finally, for portfolio performance and risk, this is where uh, Zipline really shines because it's got these uh, um, complementary libraries called PyFolio and AlphaLens. PyFolio is specifically designed to very quickly and easily dump out a ton of risk and performance statistics. And AlphaLens is designed specifically to measure your alpha performance. So very high quality libraries, um, extremely powerful. And then finally, how do we actually get to execute our trades? This is where we will use the Interactive Brokers API. Uh, this takes some getting used to, but not to worry, you will get the step-by-step -step guide line by line to get a really robust setup and get going fast. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. This is what the premise of the course is all about, the Quant Scientist Algorithmic Trading Framework, and this is version two. See you in the course.